Hello, this is Miss Augustine, and today we're going to continue in Chapter 8, and we're going to learn about how to recognize or classify the types of chemical reactions. So there are five types of chemical reactions. Combination, also called synthesis. Decomposition. Single replacement, sometimes called single displacement double replacement, sometimes called double displacement, and combustion. And the important note is that not all reactions fit into one category. A reaction may fit equally into two or more categories of reactions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll start with the combination reaction and sometimes it is called synthesis, and you can think of it as marriage. Two or more reactants combine, and you get one product. So two things go to one. So we can say that the reactants A plus B combine to form the compound AB. So A meets B, they fall in love, they get married, and they live happily ever after. I know, weird. <clears throat> but it's a way to remember it. And so my example here would be sulfur plus oxygen react to produce or yield sulfur dioxide. The opposite of combination or synthesis would be decomposition. And so we can think of that as divorce. One reactant breaks down into multiple products. So the happy couple AB <clears throat> break apart or divorce to form A and B separate. So my example here is two water molecules will decompose to produce <clears throat> two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. So with decompositions, the products can be combinations of elements or compounds, <clears throat> and they can be difficult to predict. and most of them require energy in the form of heat, light, or electricity in order for them to take place. And we'll talk about each of these reactions I want to just point out <clears throat> in other videos that I've made where we'll talk about how to predict products once we've learned how to classify reactions. So the next one that we talk about is single replacement. And as I said, sometimes in older books, it's called single displacement. And that's where atoms of one element replace atoms of a second element in a compound. So sometimes we can call that the other woman or the other man, where <clears throat> a single element encounters a compound and pushes one of the elements out of that compound. So in one case, it would push out A. In this case, it's pushing out A. And sometimes it could push out C, or excuse me, B or C. And what we'll learn later on is, depending on what the element is, it would be something that we would refer to as cationic if um, A kicks out the cation in the compound, or anionic if A kicks out the anion in the compound. My example here is two potassiums react with two water molecules to produce two potassium hydroxides and a hydrogen molecule. So with single replacement, there are two reactants and two products. So there's an element and a compound, and the products are a different element and a different compound. So the element that is displaced must be less active than the element that it is getting displaced. So again, if you think in terms of the element being able to kick somebody out of the compound, it has to have enough reactivity or be more reactive to push another element out of a compound. And so the way we figure these things out is we use something called an activity series of elements. And we have two activity series. The one I'm going to show you in the next slide is an activity series for metals. And what you're going to do is you're going to be given this, and you'll always be able to refer to it. And so the things that are the most reactive are at the top, 
and the activity decreases down to the bottom. And the way the activity series works is if you are the element that's trying to kick out another element in a compound, you can only replace things or kick things out that are below you in the activity series. So lithium can pretty much kick out anybody else here, whereas, for instance, silver only has one thing below it here, which would be gold. So silver would only be able to kick out gold, and it would not be able to kick anything out above it. And you'll notice that on the activity series, it shows you certain elements that can always replace hydrogen, and some can only kick hydrogen out of acids. So that leads us to double replacement or double displacement, which is kind of like trading partners. So two ionic compounds react and exchange cations. And so my example here is AB plus CD yielding A with D now and C with B. And in this particular type of reaction, sometimes you can think of it as, and I'm dating myself here, but it's kind of like at a square dance where you're dancing and then you change partners. So I was taught to think of it in terms of square dancing. You probably don't know what square dancing is. So here's my example. I have sodium sulfide plus cadmium 2 nitrate reacting to produce cadmium 2 sulfide and 2 sodium nitrates. So with double replacement, the ones we're going to talk about are all going to involve aqueous solutions, so things dissolved in water. For a double replacement to take place, generally one of these things has to happen. One of the products has to be a precipitate. That means it is not soluble in water. It's insoluble and falls to the bottom of the beaker. The second um, possibility is a product is a gas. It bubbles out, so it leaves the party, so to speak. And the third is a product is a molecular compound, such as water. And water in water is not going to be dissociated into free ions. So what happens in aqueous solutions is things that are ionic tend to separate into free ions. And so if something new doesn't form and either make a new solid, bubble out, or become molecular, you've just got a cup of ions, so to speak. So again, something has to leave the party and we have these conditions that we look for. So the last is combustion. And combustion sometimes is called the argument. An element or compound reacts with oxygen. And in a combustion uh, with elemental oxygen, um, you usually see heat or light produced. So now we're talking about elemental oxygen. So remember that elemental oxygen exists as a diatomic molecule. So on the reactant side, if you see an O2, then you know, oh, this is something reacting with oxygen. That means it's a combustion. So my first example is combustion of a hydrocarbon. So I'm going to give you a scary equation here. And this scary equation will help you balance combustions. So let me show it to you. If you have some hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon meaning containing just carbon and hydrogen. So these x's and y's are referring to the subscripts and it's CxHy plus, and the coefficient for oxygen is x, that x, plus y over 4, that y, yields x carbon dioxide, so x being, again, this subscript over here, plus y divided by 2, y being the subscript for hydrogen, water. So let's look at a real example. So here, CH4 is actually methane plus two oxygen molecules react to yield carbon dioxide and two waters. So I like to point out here that if we did our little tally thing, you would see that there's one carbon, one carbon, there's two times two is four oxygens, two here, two here, four oxygens, and four hydrogens, and two times two, four hydrogens. So it's balanced. So that's combustion. They can be devilishly tricky to 
um, balance. So if you memorize this equation, it's super helpful. And then the other type of combustion is uh, when there is co the combination or the combustion of an element with oxygen. And so anytime it's combustion, it means something reacting with oxygen. So here the element happens to be magnesium. And so magnesium plus oxygen, we get magnesium oxide. So when there's an element, not a hydrocarbon, but an element combining with oxygen, it's really like a synthesis or combination reaction. You get the element oxide. And this one is balanced. So for combustion, it's either an element or a compound reacting with oxygen. And for our purposes, if it's an element, it'll be a synthesis. If it's a compound, it will be some sort of a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen. They always produce either heat or light, and often both. The product of the combustion of an element is going to be the element oxide. And the products of combustion of a hydrocarbon with oxygen is always going to be carbon dioxide plus water. And as I said, I have tutorials that go into this in great detail. So for now, this is Miss Augustine, and I am signing off.